I wish that like, one day somebody, one of the Irish citizens, could come, take up my place, one week in that hell hole, and you give me your home. And you will know right now just how I feel. I just came out in support of other asylum seekers. But truly speaking, coming to Ireland, seeking asylum makes you to regret every day. I came here with my children and I watched them suffering daily, getting sick from the poisonous and the rubbish food that we get from there and the way we are treated. I don't even have words. All I can say is stop keeping us in this prison and don't deport us. Give us freedom. Waiting and waiting for a decision is the hardest thing a mother and a woman could ever, ever do. That's all I can say. But we are hopeless. What can we do? We have to keep on waiting, praying that one day, one day, one day. Thank you. Saturday saw an important demonstration as hundreds of people marched through Dublin to demand an end to the direct provision centres and for the right to work for people in the asylum protest. The protesters included many people who were stuck in direct provision centres around the country and people had travelled from Cork and Galway as well as elsewhere. The direct provision centres were opened in the year 2000 as a supposedly temporary measure. 17 years later, they are still there and people are required to live on only 2160 a week. They are institutions in a country that is all too aware of the dangers of institutionalisation, in particular through the terrible experiences of the Magdalene laundries and the abuse that took place there. We'll hear from some of the asylum speakers who were brave enough to speak out in this video. These are places of fear. People fear retaliation for speaking out, they fear retaliation for organising. The centres are also places of profit, with the usual corruption that goes alongside that. It's also the case that three of the centres are now run by a US prison company called Aramac. In the rest of this video, you'll hear the voices of residents speaking about just how terrible it is to spend your life in these places. I am Barry Saliou, from the Republic of Guinea. So anyway, we are not here many, but like many people here, maybe my accent can be a problem for much people to understand me. So I have been the system around the country for for a long time. Since 2006, April, I'm in this uh, system. But the truth is, uh, sometimes it's like a joke in a place where you just exploit people and humiliate them. Immigration is everywhere. People immigrate one to other, but we, our own, is not voluntary. It's based on political and other things that causing us moving to this country. But we are just exploited here. I don't know, it's like a, a, civilized, it's a civilized country. But we are here like a slave. Every second, we just have to keep on with them. They have to use you. You can't be uh, visited and in the room because they know what they are doing there. When we have kept people in these centers where we're basically telling them, you cannot be part of our society. We need to reject that. We need to keep on talking about this and dismantle this racist system. It cannot continue in our society. It is not okay for us to stop people from improving ourselves, to improving themselves. It is not acceptable to take a part of society and tell and leave them in limbo um, uh, within uh, an undefined period. It is not okay for us to steal the dreams and, uh, and aspiration of children. So, creating a safe and a healthy community for all is not something that we need to negotiate, but it is a must. It is something that needs to happen right now. So our politicians need to, uh, need to focus on things that matter. I'm going to repeat this and say, Leo, you need to focus on things that matter. And I'm going to tell you what matters. What matters is people's rights and dignity. What matters is for parents to be able to provide to their children. What matters is for children to find a safe space where they can invite their friend over, where they can have dinner with their parents at their own rights, at their own time, and not being told when they need to eat and when they do not need to eat. What is uh, what matters here? What matters here?
here is for people to have the right to go to work. Ramada is a fair system. And direct provision is not a fair system. So as long as direct provision is still a system that we in Ireland are allowing, we're going to stand here every single year. We're going to continue coming every single month until this unfair system is dismantled. So stand with me, people, because we might be here for a while, but we will win, and we will end direct provision. Thank you. Okay. Uh, it is a great pleasure to see a lot of people like this. Uh, I'm so grateful that we have got many people who are supporting us. And uh, I'm so happy that we came in numbers. We have got people from different direct provision centers around the country. And uh, I'm so happy that we came and we are in solidarity with the United Against Racism and other, many other organizations that are in support of internal provision and the right to work. Uh, we are one race, one human, uh, we belong in this country. We, the government should do the right thing and allow all us to the right, give all us the right to work so that we can all be part of the community and contribute to the society. We all want to be part of the society. We all want to contribute and thank the, the people, the taxpayers that are taking care of us. We must also thank them that we are living in this country, they've welcomed here, yes, this is a country of a thousand welcomes. So, all those thousands welcome here. Is asylum seekers being monitored when they go to our meetings? Asylum seekers being monitored because they wanted to go to this march today. We're seeing their freedom and dignity being completely ignored. And what's happening is, is that this form of institutional living that has been going on for decades in this country, as far back as the Magdalen Laundries, is happening today, and that needs to be challenged. That can't just be challenged by the residents of the centres themselves. It has to be challenged by people in Ireland too. It has to be challenged by every, every Irish citizen in this country. They can't be left alone. A lot of people living in direct division feel like as if their needs are being ignored. They feel like as if they're standing alone. So many people, we know for a fact, are still back and going in both those centres because they felt like as Corporate, they didn't have the support, and because around them they're seeing the centres that they're in, they're stopping them going to college, they're stopping them being allowed to work, and those people then feel like they have no dignity. When we're standing. Hi. Yeah, I'm from Cork. Um, for people of BMA for the first time, last year, uh, 2014, we marched and come again here in the city, in front of the apartment there, the building. And I say one thing, I say, the biggest crook people in the world, the big mafia people, they are politicians. Those who are sitting in the office, dressing in a suit, tie and butter, sitting in the office, monitoring everything, creating disorder around all the world, these are politicians. In Africa, in Asia, wherever we come from, they are politicians who are controlling everything. They are the wrong people. But they are saying to people that we are the wrong people because people are fleeing from their country, coming here in Ireland to seek for refugee. And when they come here, now they take you, they put you in a system, they call direct provision, who can be good for them. But that direct provision is good for nobody. It's good for nobody. It's not helping anybody. Because direct provision stops you to have education. Direct provision stop you to have a right to work. Direct provision stop you to be, to live as a human being in Ireland. That's all I want to say. Thank you very much, Leonard. Hearing this, these stories are heartbreaking, seriously. Uh, these people are, have ambitious. They have dreams to follow. And we are killing them. For God's sake, Ireland, 2018 and people are treated this way. What world we live in? My name is Fatan Al-Tamimi. Uh, I am Palestinian. have been here since 1988. Uh, I came as an immigrant, and uh, I studied here, lived here, and I'm still living here. But Ireland welcomed me at that time, and we had no, never had a problem with that. I can't see what's the issue with the government now with having these asylum seekers and refugees in direct provision. Why can't we welcome them here? Why can't we give them the chance to live in dignity? Why can't we give them the chance to work? There are lots of them are qualified, well qualified, educated people. Not give them the chance to work. Give them the chance to give a better uh, diversity to this country. It's better for this country. Why not? 
end this direct provision, end this inhumane system. Um, Uh, I'm going to read you a poem uh, by uh, a, a Syrian refugee, actually. Uh, he, um, he traveled to the UK in 2003, and I felt this poem speak in my heart. It's better than the words I'm going to talk. So I'm going to read this poem to you. Where I come from, from the earth I come, to the earth I come, from the heart of Africa, or from the kidneys of Asia, from India, with spices I come, from deep Amazonian forest, from the Tipton meadow I come, from an ivory land, from far, from everywhere around me, from where, from where there are trees, mountains, rivers, and seas, from here, there, from everywhere, from the womb of the Mediterranean I come, from the metal uh, sacker from the closed borders, from the camp with a thousand tents, from the shores with Alan the Kurd I come, from a bullet I wo from a bullet wound, from the face of a lone child, from a single mother's sigh, or from a single mother's sigh, from a cut and inflatable boat about to sink, from a bottle of water for fifty to share from frozen snot in a toddler's nose, from a tear on a father's cheek, from a hungry stomach, from a graffiti that reads, I was here once. From another one, a tree says, I love life. From a, from a missing limp, like a human, with everything I come to share the space. So give these people the chance to share with us this space. Thank you. Thank you, Sataki. Just a quick question, really. Uh, the government announced the Right to Work scheme. Well, not yet formally, but they, there are news now that according to the Supreme Court decision, they have to allow the asylum seekers to work. What do you see is coming, Orway? Firstly, uh, thank you uh, for this opportunity. The, we feel, as asylum seekers, that these announcements of uh, the right to work don't work for asylum seekers. It's just as good as saying, yes, you have the right to work, but you cannot work. So we oppose all these so-called restrictions and the, talking about nine months and you must be on appeal. So that's not what people that seek asylum want. People want to work meaningful jobs. That's what people want to do. Thank you, Lucky. Just to follow up on that, uh, it, the, the system says uh, if you have an appeal, i.e. your application for uh, status has failed, uh, that you cannot be avail of this right. So looking at your stats, European Union and Irish government stats, I believe up to 90% of every applicant has been refused on the first instance. Does it mean they can't work? You see, they say people who have been uh, who are on appeal who will not be able to be given the right to work. We know most of the people who are uh, uh, applicants are already on appeal stage. Most of the people you can check whoever that is here, everyone that is here is already on the appeal stage. So you think about it: who will they, who will then be able to work if everybody is on appeal stage? So, where does this go? Where is it going? You tell us, where do you think the campaign needs to go? The campaign needs to go directly to those, to the, to the Leinster House. The, the campaign needs to go strong. People will, will need to go direct to the Parliament. We need to say to them, this is what people are saying. We have had so many talks about this. It must go to the Justice Department, it must go to the Taoiseach. People must know that people are tired. 17 years, the court proved that beyond reasonable doubt that this system was incorrect, it was unlawful. It, the onus now is for them to make it at least 
better for the people. Let the people work. Don't make things to look like we have the right to work. But people are here. They want to work. They want to start their own businesses. You know? So let, let's, let's push on from now on. I want people not this to be a, a once-off kind of a gathering. Let it continue. Even if we do it every month, let's do it until people listen. If we join our hands together in unity, everyone, they will know that people are talking. Okay, thank you, Lucky. We are going to get to say a few more words at the other side of the rally, but unless you have uh, any other thoughts. Yes, I will say a few words there. Uh, what I can just say is that uh, today it's, it's really uh, a historic day and uh, it's encouraging to see a lot of people to come together to say no to, to this direct provision. A right to work, I'm glad to hear people talking about deportations because half the time people don't really dig down into deportations. Deportations are the one thing that's keeping people from being active in terms of their rights because they, are, they fear deportation. It's good when we see people talking clearly and loud about deportation. We say end direct provision, stop deportations, and give people the right to work. Hello. Um, about a year and a half ago, Lucky from Massey came to Belfast to speak to us about the horrendous system of direct provision in the south of Ireland. He also stressed us the importance of solidarity. That's why we've come today from Belfast to stand with you all and call for an end to direct provision. In the north, we have our own system of detention. People face arrest at any time, based exclusively on racial profiling. They're taken to temporary holding facility in Lawn before being removed to detention centres in the UK where they face serious physical and mental abuses and the threat of deportation to countries that they've fled where their human rights have been abused. We're calling for an end to all systems of detention and for asylum seekers to be recognised as citizens, as human beings. People have travelled from all over Ireland to be here today. We hope in the future that you'll travel north and show solidarity with us against our own horrendous system of detention. Thanks. Everyone! Everyone is welcome here, yes. and we should make sure that there is protection for those who are going to be deported, as what happens in other countries. We really need to have safe houses so that those who want to live in here are safe and not deported. And who is deporting them? our so-called Irish government, who at this moment is allowing Shannon to be used by US planes to bomb in villages and in towns. And what happens? The people then become refugees and they come to Ireland for safety. They don't attack us and they bloody well should. They should name and shame us for what we have done to them. And the least that we can do for them is to make sure no deportations close these centers down. Everyone has a right for shelter. This is the text of the leaflet produced by the Movement of Asylum Seekers in Ireland. Freedom, Dignity, Justice. End direct provision. Stop deportation. Give us the right to work. Direct provision destroys many lives. It has robbed us of our future and even our identity and sense of who we are. Denying us the right to work is a big part of this injustice and destruction. We are deprived of the right to provide for ourselves and our families. We are robbed of hope for the future and the dignity that every human being deserves. It is government policy to keep us in a state of poverty and segregation. The unrestricted right to work is a crucial part of dismantling this system of apartheid that is called direct provision. Asylum seeker is a label that erases the reality of our lives, talents, experiences. Everything about us ceases to exist once we become asylum seeker. 
Most of us suffer from depression and demotivation as a result of not being able to work and not being able to make any productive use of our time, abilities, knowledge and qualifications. Among us are doctors, lawyers, bankers, computer scientists, nurses, teachers, company managers, administrators, business people. But regardless of qualifications, all of us have skills, qualifications, experiences, talents, capabilities that are being wasted while we are barred from employment. The right to work is not just about people who are in the asylum system now, but about those who come after, and about our sons and daughters who are now children and young adults, and the opportunities that will be made available to them to make a life with dignity and meaning in this country. Maasai call for the right to work without discrimination. This includes immediate access to the labour market for all, including those of us in the system now, with no time restriction. No restrictions on which jobs can be taken up by asylum seekers. To have the same labour rights and rights to social benefits as citizens. To be recognised in trade unions. The right to education and training. Acknowledgement of skills and experiences we bring with us from country of origin and recognition of home country qualifications. The right to work must not invalidate our right to accommodation, access to medical cards and other basic supports we get to subsist while in direct provision. Join us in calling for the right to work for all. Add your voice to the uplift email and ten, tell ministers Charlie Flanagan, Francis Fitzgerald and others that you support the unrestricted right to work for all people in the asylum system. See uh, action.uplift.ie campaigns right to work email. Call government ministers and your local TDs and tell them you support the immediate, unrestricted right to work for all asylum seekers. Follow Massey on Facebook for regular updates on what we are doing and how you can stand with us and check in on our website at massey.ie, M-A-S-I dot I-E. Massey is the movement of asylum seekers in Ireland. We are an independent, self-organised collective of asylum seekers and former asylum seekers seeking justice, freedom and dignity for all asylum seekers. That's the text of the leaflet Maasai were distributing at the uh, End Direct Provision Rally on the, in November 2017.